All right, Every Mechanics video here. We're going to start our lab on brake line inspection and routing. So first thing we're going to talk about is that every mechanic should know that rubber does what over time? Deteriorates. I love Jacob's, you know, uh, response there. I mean, this is something that is really taken for granted. And we talk a lot about this on, you know, becoming a technician is that we want to master our craft, right? So to really master a craft, Anybody could just take parts on and off, but I think when you get an understanding of how this brake line is actually made, if you did a cutaway of this, well, there you go. There is a cutaway. You'd see braided strands in here that give the brake line its strength. And obviously, you guys are starting to work on a lot of older equipment. I mean, we've had hydraulic brake systems for a long time, 20 years plus, right? Mm -hmm. So what I know is that when this is made, we take this rubber, uh, uh, reinforced line and we crimp this metal banjo around it and so that's a point where you know it's a weak length you know over time here especially as this moves around it can crack or deteriorate so what people really need to do is you need to take and inspect the brake line fully rubbing your fingers along this all the way down getting your flashlight out being able to see the whole pathway as it goes down along the vehicle so you can see here if we in a Look right here and see where it's wet. That's not right. So we've got a situation where we got no break. And so maybe we maybe the master cylinder is okay, but we're losing the fluid through a cracked line. As you continue on, you can see in this one where we have a joint that uh, attaches here and the line goes down. You have to physically touch this all the way down. That's my big recommendation. And here's the reason is inside here, that rope, if you will, or nylon, however it's made, when it breaks, it's, it's a cord, okay? So it can just deteriorate and it can snap. And now when we don't have the reinforcement here to hold the rubber to its shape, because there's hundreds of PSI here in a hydraulic brake. When you apply that pressure, what's that rubber gonna do? Expand. It's gonna expand. When you get that bulge or that bubble on there, that means that the brake is not getting the supplied pressure that it was designed for. Here's a severely bulged line, you can see uh, three big ones and a smaller one there. What a great example. Do you remember the other day I was talking at class about the fact that a motorcycle when it's built was rated to stop in a certain distance? Yeah. Yeah. We need good tires. We need an optimum dry condition with no sand or debris. We need good brakes. We need to make all that happen. The, the bike has to have a certain weight rider on it for you to match that specification that it can stop from 60 mile an hour to zero and say you know, three, four seconds or something. I mean, we everything has to be perfect. We're not a perfect world. We got debris on the road. The weight of our rider is going to change. We need to inspect these brake systems very thorough. If that rubber line is allowed, allowed to bulge, that means the rubber will expand before the piston on the brake is going to operate. What's that going to do to the time that that customer has to brake? It's going to make it longer. It's going to extend that, right? It's going to take longer to stop the same 600, 800 pounds, which means they might make the impact with what's trying to pull out in front of them. So is that pretty important to check the line? Yeah. Yep. The other thing is, is that uh, there's a chance that if continued use is going to happen, that that line could burst. If that line bursts, it gets brake fluid all over the place. Not only the vehicle not going to stop, even if they didn't get hurt and they used the say the rear brake to stop the motorcycle that brake fluid all over the place dot3 and four brake fluid eats paint mm -hmm. so that's a bad deal so we got uh, definitely some things to think about here uh the air part of your lap sheet we're going to be looking at routing what's the best way to determine the routing of your actual brake lines uh, i'd say use the service manual for your year make and model of your vehicle Awesome, that's a perfect answer. Uh, routing is a big issue because, you know, uh, if we allow this to be too tight, when the, the, uh, the forks extend, it can rip the brake line, ripping it off the vehicle, and that's a problem. Uh, the other thing we have here is, let's say, you guys, we, we know the cafe scene's huge, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so a lot of guys are t keeping their front fender off. Well, that's a problem too, because look at this. Okay, you see how the brake line could go and actually uh, come in contact with the tire? Yeah. I cannot stress enough, if you're gonna be one of those uh, people that choose to not have a front fender, you want to take and make yourself a clamp that will secure this brake line so that it can't make contact with the tire. Give me a little summary, how did I say to inspect it? Run your finger down it. 
all the way, the whole path of it. Don't quit somewhere because it goes out of sight. Get your flashlight out and inspect the entire brake line, right? Yep. And then uh, the last thing would be the routing. Make sense? Yep. All right.